Jose Mourinho's top Manchester United transfer signings. That what that's what we'll be talking about. Um, get involved. Give us your thoughts. I've got a few ideas. It's going to be very interesting to see how close we are in the summer in relation to these three stroke four, maybe five if Zlatan, six if the hair goes signings that Mourinho will make in the summer. We'll be talking about those, so get commenting, give us your thoughts. But first of all, it is a Wednesday night. Monaco have just knocked Manchester City out. We don't normally go live this late, but I've got plenty of time to discuss things with you now. So let's have it. Let's talk transfers. I'm going to talk Lukaku first. However, we didn't do a show at half past eight tonight because we all wanted to watch Man City v Monaco. Not because we want to watch Man City go out. That was a massive big bonus. But realistically, because we wanted to watch Monaco because there's a few players from Monaco um, that people think we might be interested in that, you know, we've had a good couple of games to watch them now. Some of them not so good in the first leg, but some of them very good tonight. Bakayoko, Fabinho, uh, Silva and Mbappe. Is that how we pronounce it? Um, so yeah, we'll be talking about those. But just very, very quickly, I just want to say, just want to say, let the haters let, let the haters hate, let the haters hate. Um, Mourinho's in Europe longer than Pep, and what I would say to the haters about that, um, we're, you're in the Europa League, we're in the Champions League. It's not Mourinho's fault. It's not Mourinho's fault. We're not in the Champions League. He inherited a club in the Europa League. He, he couldn't magic has been in the Champions League. We're still in Europe longer than you. And the big second thing. The, the absolute haunting that Pogba gets from the media and rivals just makes me laugh because Kevin De Bruyne actually is a forward. And no, he's not been injured for the last six months. He has actually been playing for Man City. He's just done sod all. But the hate comes down on Pogba, even though this is De Bruyne's second season and he's used to the Premier League. And he's just a bottler, look, just like Manchester City. So, yeah, Pep Fraudiola, I've been consistent about that for a long time. My only concern tonight was that the uh, Monaco defence might not... Uh, um, Sod all that, they're out. Forget it. Let's get on with Manchester United. But you know what? It's funny that Mourinho's still in Europe and Pep's not. I want to talk Lukaku first. I'm going to come back to Monaco because there's a lot of players to talk about about Monaco. And I know uh, you will want to talk about that yourselves. But let's get Lukaku done first of the way. Um, Romelu, uh, Romelu Lukaku, uh, formerly... Now, what I say, and let me just read some of your comments about this. I say... I don't want him. I think he's a big game bottler against Manchester United, very much like Harry Kane. I think he does very well against other sides, especially the lower teams, gets lots of goals. But against the higher teams, and especially against Manchester United, when I've seen him over the last two years, he goes missing. Um, people come back and say, well, what about the hat-trick he scored for West Brom against Manchester United, Mark? Yeah, it was an exhibition game. It was like 20-all, wasn't it? I think it was actually 5-all. But it was, an, it was the last game of the season. Sunny day in Birmingham. It was Sir Alex Ferguson's last game. It was just an exhibition game. Lukaku got a hat-trick. So bloody what? It didn't matter. It was an exhibition. Um, also, I don't think Mourinho really rates him. Mourinho's seen a lot of him in his former years. And I think he's... A, not, 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 not that he's a bad player. He's a good player. And I, I myself, last summer, was talking about Lukaku. Or maybe it was the summer before. It was the summer before because over the last two years I've seen him playing against United and I just I don't think you know we've got Zlatan at the moment people have the audacity to criticise Zlatan who is a world class striker I know he's missed chances but he's world class Lukaku's not in that category I think if Zlatan goes you've got to go for the creme de la month of striker and Lukaku isn't it for me I understand why people might think it is that's fine by you but it's not by me. I don't think we'll sign him anyway. I know he's got the same agent as, as Latan and, and uh, Pogba and Mkhitaryan in Mini Rayola. I just can't see it happening. I don't think it'll happen. I think um, people say, well, he didn't like Matter at Chelsea. He's inherited Matter at Chelsea uh, United. He'd have to go and spend £70 million on Lukaku. I just cannot see that happening. Um, I am going to have a look at a lot of your comments. Um, Abik says, I disagree. I think Lukaku would take United to the next level. I disagree. Um, and Anthony Abderab is on about Mbappe at all, uh, uh, saying he's awesome. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I'm probably not. Monaco striker. Uh, obviously, he scored tonight. Um, a lot of people compare him to Thierry Henry. Um, another product of Monaco, just like Anthony Martial. And uh, Martial tweeting tonight, congratulating his old teammates, which was nice. But this Mbappe lad is fantastic. French striker. Just turned 18 in December. I mean, we, we go on about Rashford and there are comparisons there. But this lad is doing it in the Champions League and, and, he's, and you know, he's their focal point. I mean, they didn't have Falcao tonight. Um, very, very good striker. Um, would I want him at Manchester United? Do I think he would come to Manchester United? No and no. And that, you might say that's controversial, but we've got Rashford, we've got Martial. And I think that if, our issue up front is if Zlatan goes... If Zlatan goes, we've got to replace him with an experienced striker. So I can see why people would say Lukaku. I'd be more thinking an, an Aubameyang or someone like that, maybe a Dybala. But 
this uh, Mbappe from Monaco um, is 18. And we'd have a very young strike force, especially if Zlatan and Rooney goes. And and if you look at Mourinho's history, he is not going to have a, a, a blanket young strikers like that. So I think I worded it wrong. I'd like him to come to Manchester United because he's an exciting young player and he does remind me of Tier. The thing about like, the, the Thierry Henry comparison is very funny because Thierry Henry at 18 was a winger uh, up until uh, I think his early 20s until he, he became a striker I think 23, 24 when he became a striker this lad's doing it at 18 uh, Henri wasn't doing it at 18 he was always a winger so a very exciting future and I think a lot of people will be after him Bakayoko is interesting he was poor in the first leg um, midfielder for Monaco um, probably parent carrying an injury better tonight but I, I just find him a little bit slow I just find him a little bit slow and also, he's not. I don't think he's the sitting midfielder, the Kante that we think we need to replace uh, Carrick and let Pogba and Herrera and whoever ahead of them have freedom. He's more box to box. I'm not saying that won't, that means we won't sign him, but I I would prefer that we went um, somewhere else and got somebody a little bit more defensive, which I want to talk about a little bit later in the show. Um, sticking with Monaco, Bernardo Silva again, very very good player. But when you've got Mkhitaryan, you've got Mata. Do you need a Bernardo Silva, which again, he's, he's not a pacey winger. I think we lack pace in our side when Martial and Rashford are out. We think we really lack flair and pace. Bernardo Silva, I, I, I think he's better than Mata, but would you sell Mata to get rid of Bernard, to get Bernardo Silva in? That's the question I would pose because um, we're not going to get rid of uh, Mkhitaryan, are we? So um, that, would, that would be on Bernardo Silva. Fabinho is interesting. Fabinho, correct me if I'm wrong on this. But I think that Fabinho has the same agent as uh, Jose Mourinho in George Mendes. If it's not Mendes, it's Raiola. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Mendes. Um, we've been linked to Fabinho quite a lot. As a right back, he plays centre midfield a lot. Um, and, you know, he could be that defensive midfielder type who can drop into right back as well. So I think he is quite interesting. I think he's about 23 now. He's definitely come on a lot in the last year or so. We've been linked with him for the last couple of years. Um, and I do like him. Um, the midfielder I was talking about was Kessie at Atalanta, who I prefer to Bakayoko, by the way. So, um, yeah, Fabinho is an interesting one. Out of all of them, I think Fabinho probably suits us better um, in what we're looking for. Um, so we've done Lukaku. Uh, very quickly on Griezmann. I'm, I am looking at your comments. Very quickly on Griezmann. I do think for Griezmann will happen still. I don't want to spend a hell of a lot of time on it because we've spoken about Griezmann a lot. Um, people get a bit annoyed about it. But I do like Griezmann, obviously. Last summer, right at the summer. Join us this summer. We'll be, we're will be we live pretty much every night, twice a day when the summer kicks off with transfer stuff. Um, United stand. We love transfers. So, uh, um, But the Griezmann thing, at the start of last summer, I said if we could have one dream signing, it would be Griezmann. Um, so I, I, I'll, I'll be over the moon if we get Griezmann in. I do think we'll get him. Um, I think we've got to get Champions League football. I've been thinking about this over the last few weeks. I know a couple of months ago I said... We can still get him without Champions League football. But looking at Griezmann and listening to the things he's been on about the weather, I think the weather is code for I need Champions League football. Uh, and I think we've got a good chance of getting it. I think the thing is, there's only us and Leicester left in European football now. Um, Leicester won't be in it for long. We'll be in the quarterfinals tomorrow. And then I think we've got to take it very seriously. We've got to take the Europa League very, very seriously. Um, and it almost plays into our hands a little bit because... After the Europa League game tomorrow, we play Spurra on Saturday, on Sunday, then we international break, and then there's three Premier League games in a week. West Brom at home, Everton in midweek at home, and then Sunderland away. If we win these next four Premier League games, we'll have a very good idea of how easy top four is going to be. Um, but we can definitely do both now the FA Cup's fallen, fallen away. Um, so, yeah, we've done Griezmann. Um... I'm not doing the preview. I've done the preview on Rostov. It's on. I'll put you the link in the video. The, the Rostov preview is there. If, not, if you haven't watched it, it, it's up. I did it this afternoon. Um, so, yeah, uh, the, the positions we've always spoken about. Let's go back a bit. Centre-back. We do need a centre-back. I don't think anybody would deny that we need a centre-back. Um, I would implore you to watch, if you can get home in time from school, work, or wherever you are tomorrow, uh, pull yourself away from whatever you're doing and watch the six o'clock game, which is the second leg of Roma against Leon. The first leg was fantastic. And I think yet again, you've got players that maybe uh, Manchester United bound or considered. Um, Lacazette, a lot of people, I'm glad I've mentioned that actually. I want to talk about Lacazette as well. Um, on the Roma side, Manlas. Now, they did let four goals in. They did let four goals in. Didn't do many favours. But... Um, they're our main rival anyway for the Europa League, I think. Um, that's not not to say we're going to get an easy ride until we play them, but I think they will be the main rival. So it's worth watching it from that sense. It was a fantastic first leg. I actually think Roma will knock Leon out. 
I know that it's 4-2, but it's very similar to what Monaco had tonight. And Roma were 2-1 up at half-time in the first leg. They've got the two away goals. They're Italian. I think they'll beat Lyon in, in Italy, and I think they'll go through. But watch the game, not just for the entertainment, not just because I think it's Manchester United's biggest rival in the Europa League, which is exciting enough, but also, take a look at a few players. Um, Manlas, first of all, against Lacazette. Centre-back against striker. A lot of people... I Again, I think it's two years ago, maybe a little bit longer, we were talking about Lacazette. And I do like Lacazette. But, again, he falls into another player that people have been mentioning tonight. William Carvalho at um, Lisbon. Um, these are players that have been linked with moves now for about three years. And I just think, well, why have they never moved? If they are so good... People would have paid the money that those clubs want for them, especially in the case of Carvalho. It's longer than three years that he's been linked every summer with United and Arsenal and people don't take him on. So I'm not convinced about Carvalho. I've watched not loads of him in Portugal. I don't watch a lot of Portugal Portuguese football, but I've watched him a bit in summer tournaments and I just don't see there's better defensive midfielders than him. So I'd, I'd kill that one off. Le Cazat is good. But Le Cazat is playing in the French League, which tonight did knock City out. I'll give it that. But... It's not a fantastic league. I mean, we saw that when we played Saint-Étienne. Um, most of the teams in that league are pub teams. There are a few good teams in there, probably two or three really good teams that can give Premier League teams a game. Um, Lyon, Monaco, PSG. The rest aren't that great. Um, and Saint-Étienne are one of the better, not great teams. The, the bottom of the table is rubbish. So Lacazette scoring loads of good goals doesn't really tell you a lot. He's a good player, like as that, and I think if you want him at Manchester United, then you would like Jermaine Defoe at Manchester United in his prime. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if you wanted Jermaine Defoe at Manchester United. For me, he's not Manchester United class, Jermaine Defoe, even when he was really good. He was a he hit his limit at Spurs, you know, a team that's battling for fifth. He's not a prem, he's not a top going for a title Premier League striker. Um, and I, I fear the same about Lacazette. I don't think we'll be in for him, but that doesn't mean I'm right, totally. Manalas, love him. Um, he, if you don't know anything about him, watch him tomorrow night. He's fantastic in the air. He win, I think in the prem, in the Serie A, he wins the most aerial duels out of anybody, him and Koulibaly at uh, Napoli, who again is another centre-back I really, really like. Um, there's always that risk of Serie A to, to the Premier League, as we've seen, but it tends to be the risk with Italian defenders, as we've seen with Darmi. You know, there's no Italian defenders that have ever come to the Premier League and done well but there are defenders who've come from Serie A and done well so Manolas is Greek that could work out but we need a centre-back that is dominant in the air Chris Smalling is our best player in the air and I know I like him but I don't necessarily think he's the answer I don't think Bay and Smalling are going to win you the title uh, I don't I think Smalling's got too many mistakes in him I think Smalling for me is is your third or fourth best striker uh, not striker centre back Bay is your first he's, he's, and then he needs a partner because it's not Phil Jones uh, I think Phil Jones needs to go I think his injury problems and then the mistakes he's making at the moment mean he has to go I'd have four centre backs next season they would be Bay to play in the team um, a new one to play with Bay, and then have Rojo and Smalling as backup um, and then you know Twan um as the backup youth player if, if we had real problems so Manolas is a consideration. There's talk that he's going to go to Inter. If he wants to have a cigar on in Italy, because it's, it's easier to defend over there, that's up to him. But I think Manchester United could do that deal. Rudiger at Roma is good. I spoke about him before. I like him a lot. Again, he's a tough, combative centre-back. He can also play fullback. He's good. Um, Koulibaly, again, he's massive and dominant. This is what we need. We need a, we need a sort of Vidic centre-back. Somebody who's just dominant in the air. Good defender, but dominant in the air. We cannot go and get... I mean, Varane's a consideration. I've just seen somebody there. Varane is a consideration. But the worst thing we could do is go and get somebody like... I don't know. I'm trying to think of somebody... Um, a good centre-back who's not good in the air. Um, or who's average in the air. So... I can't really think of anybody that Manchester United would be linked with. But... Um, just... Just sticking with someone like Rojo or Jones, you know, they're, they're good. They can be good defenders, but they're not good in the air. And that, that's what Manchester United miss. If you look at United over the last season, this season and last season, we, we concede a lot of chances from crosses into our box and we, we're rubbish at corners. I mean, I've watched us recently. We've had like 10 corners in the first half and you may as well just give a goal kick because we don't do anything with it. I, I want to mention this. We're never going to sign him, but can you remember uh, the summer before last when I thought we were going to sign Ramos and we all thought we were going to sign Ramos and we got to give him the run around and he was hinting at it. And I did the video and I said, if we get Ramos, 
it will be massive for us. And people were like, I don't want to pay 40 million for him. And I said, if we get Ramos, we're going to be so, so dominant. And he is the ideal player from for corners. He would have been absolutely perfect. I know it would have been Van Hal signing. And if we'd got him, would would we have been so bad? And would we have got Mourinho? And yeah, I ultimately believe that we're better off with Mourinho. But Ramos is exactly the sort of player. I mean, the amount of goals he's got this season from crosses uh, late on for, for Real Madrid, that's what United miss. We need somebody dominant in the air. So a centre-back is, 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 a, is one of the three positions that Mourinho is on about. Guaranteed, we're going to sign a centre-back. Um, Griezmann or Sanchez? Alexis Sanchez, I did the video last week. Uh, Tyron Williams is on about Rafael Varane if De Gea goes to Madrid. Um, quickly on that, um, I think that De Gea will go back to Madrid this summer. I, I, I've been thinking, I did the video last week, obviously the top five replacements, if you want to watch that. Um, but I've just got a horrible feeling it's going to happen. The only saving grace at the moment is it's quiet. I, I think the key moment's going to be between now and the end of April. If it starts to trickle from Real Madrid that they want uh, De Gea, then I would I, I would would have major concerns. I mean, as as things stand at the moment, he's going to make a decision in May. He does have a buyout clause. I don't know why people keep saying that's a myth when it isn't. Um, he does have a buyout clause. He signed his new contract when the fax machine thing had broken down when he was going to go to Real Madrid. He signed the new contract quite quickly after that. If he was so unhappy, um, if he was so adamant that he wanted to go to Real Madrid, why would he go and sign a, a binding contract to keep him Manchester United? Effectively, he signed a contract with a get-out clause, which I think is about 50 million euros. Um, if he goes, I'll be gutted. He was fantastic against Chelsea. He is irreplaceable. But if he goes, he doesn't go with good wishes, but he has been a fantastic servant for Manchester United. And if he goes, he's going because he wants to go back to Spain. So I don't agree with it. I think he should stay at United, but it's one of them things. And then we're going to be signing a goalkeeper, which of the top five we were talking about, Oblak was fantastic for Atletico Madrid tonight. Donnarama is the young, next up and coming fantastic keeper, which is what we did with De Gea. And then you've got a few others, a bit, you know, Loris. I don't want Loris. Um, and then you fall into the really obscure categories of, you know, maybe the Sunderland goalkeeper Pickford or Butland or Schmeichel or even Romero. But I think, you know, I would, would go for a top keeper and, and Donnarama would be the one for me. Um, Crezia Prince is on about Lindelof. Look, I said the Lindelof deal was done in January. A lot of people thought it was and apparently it was the week before Christmas done. But then uh, Benfica put the price up. I never said I wanted Lindelof. In fact, I did a video at the start of December, the top five centre-backs I would go for. And I think Lindelof was fifth. All I said is the deal's done for Lindelof. I didn't say I wanted him, but I would trust Mourinho if he went for him. He signed a new contract at Benfica. It could happen. I don't think it will. I don't think he'll be coming. So I don't think we need to worry about that one. So the centre-backs we've sort of discussed. Um, whether we go for a sort of right back, I don't know. Which is why I think Fabinho could be interesting because he can play right back, but he can also be a midfielder. Valencia is perfectly fine as a right back at the moment for the next year or two. Um, we probably knew, do need a backup right back. Would we go and get Seamus Coleman as for a few, you know, about ten million? Would we go and get the uh, lad at Samadou at Benfica, um, who's a young lad, um, I think he's about 21, 22. You know, learn the role, get a few games. We could do that as well. He's exciting. Uh, they call him the next Dani Alves. He is quite good going forward. Um, defensively, can be a bit suspect. But if Mourinho wants him, then that's good. Um, Willian would be good for Manchester United. This is Ben Hadfield. I do like Willian. Um, um, but I can't see it happening. Um, Lindelof already signed a new deal. Let's go for Van Dijk instead. Says awesome guy. Van Dijk is a good player at Southampton. And the fact that he's been injured... Um, and probably he's going to be coming back to Southampton. Who There's a lot of teams who are going to be on the beach soon because they're going to be mid-table teams that are out of all the cups, that can't get um, can't get European football, not going to get relegated, so they put their feet up. So Van Dijk probably back from injury soon. Um, he's gone a little bit quiet. I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with Van Dijk as a centre-back. But let's move into the midfield because that's I, we're definitely going to be signing midfield. Uh, and I want to sort of touch on some of the players that might be missing as leaving as well. I think it's interesting about Michael Carrick. I don't know what you lot think. Um, I think it's really... I mean, I'm intrigued a bit by Bay. I'd be interested to see if Bay plays against Rostov because why, he couldn't play in the first leg because he was suspended. Then we have this Chelsea game and he doesn't play him. And then he... Will he play him tomorrow? Oh, I hope, you know, Bay is clearly our best centre-back. I don't want a situation with Bay that we've had with Mkhitaryan, Martial and Shaw where we're going, these are three of our best players. Why aren't you playing him, Jose? Um, he's got to play Bay. 
But Carrick's interesting. Again, not really using him much at the moment. I still think Carrick is a fantastic player. I think he, he came on in that second half quite recently, didn't he? And uh, changed the game around. Uh, who was it, Mark? It was the, it was the League Cup final. Uh, came on. We were losing that midfield terribly in that first half at Wembley. And Carrick came on and stowed the ship. I mean, we've not really seen him since. Um, so I think Carrick will go in the summer. I think Rooney will go in the summer. I wouldn't be surprised if both went to the MLS. Um which is a massive amount of experience lost from the dressing room, some would say. I would say it's the old dressing room. It's not the dressing room that Mourinho's building. Mourinho's dressing room is Pogba, Herrera, Zlatan at the moment. That's Mourinho's power base in the dressing room. Uh, Rooney and Carrick are respected in the dressing room, but they are old school in the dressing room. And they, in, in Rooney's case, I think he will go. In Carrick's case, I'd like him to stay another year, but he's not being used by Mourinho, so I think he will go. But ultimately, we need to replace somebody in that position. I think Herrera does a, a valiant job, but he's not a defensive midfielder. And, and as we saw on Monday, although I think it was harsh, you can't argue with the fact that he does give a lot of silly fouls away. Um, and ultimately, I don't think he's a good enough defensive midfielder for us to win titles. Um, I think Herrera may well end up being a bit of a squad player, but he could still be a first team player anyway. So, But we need a defensive midfielder of, of Kante sort of style, but with a bit better ball distribution. Kante's a great player, but he's not a fantastic footballer. He just has an engine of... Well, he's got two engines. That's the, that's the thing with, with Kante. He's absolutely everywhere. So if you're looking for that sort of replacement, I personally do believe that Fozu Menza can be that good. I'm very, very frustrated this season in the way that Mourinho has handled Fozu Menza. Because on one hand, he's handled Pereira fantastically. And I want to mention Pereira now. And Andres Pereira is doing absolute wonders in Spain. If you've not watched him, and I've not watched every game, but I've watched a lot and I watch the highlights because it's difficult sometimes to watch him live. Um, although streams are out there. Um, he's doing fantastic things. In a team that's not very good, Granada, um, he's doing fantastic things. Um, I'll tell you what, if we want to get rid of him, he'll be snapped up by a decent team in La Liga because he's hot property. But he's Manchester United's property. And he's like a new signing in the summer. And I really want people to... If I hope Mourinho embraces it. And if Mourinho does embrace him and wants to give him a chance, I want all of you to give him a chance and embrace him as a new signing. Not don't you know if we don't sign? Um, I don't know if we don't go and sign somebody. We don't sign a wide player or an attacking midfielder because we've got faith in Pereira. I don't want people to be moaning because oh we should have signed such and such. We should have signed such and such or a Draxler or whatever. I know he's not available now, but you know what I mean. Because Pereira is going to be fantastic. I've again if you've been watching United stand for the last two and a half years, the last. The, the last US tour, he was he was the best player in the squad for those who were watching it at three o'clock in the morning, which we'll be doing again this year. Um, he's a fantastic player. He's got absolutely everything. And I, I always throw this out because I know it winds people up, but I saw him play against Wigan in pre, our first pre-season game and Jose Marino's first game. He came on in the second half, scored a goal and played in the Michael Carrick role. And he was absolutely fantastic. His ball distribution is superb. He's a lot bigger than people think. I think Pereira's got a great future at Manchester United. I just hope and pray that Mourinho gives it him. Um, that's my concern. He's good enough. He's always been good enough. He's gone away and had a loan. Fantastic. Give him a chance, Jose. In relation to um, Fozu Menza, I'm frustrated. Fozu Menza last season, around this time last season, played against Spurs away from home. You know, one of the top sides in, in England. And he was our man of the match. He was absolutely fantastic. And he should be going from strength to strength. This year, he's took a step backwards. He's, he's not playing. Um, all he's doing is training with the first team. But he was last year. I mean, fairness to Van Hal, last year he was playing. And and and, and it's frustrated me about Fozu Menza because I, we've all played football or we've all got a brain in our head. And you don't get as much from training with Manchester United as you would get from being on loan at Bournemouth and playing 30 games a season. And that's what Fozu Menza should have done. Because... He's not even on the bench most of the time. So it's not like Jose can say, well, I need him on the bench because I need to play him 10 minutes if, if someone gets injured or anything like that. He's not even on the bench when we've had injury problems. Fozu Menza should have been out on loan this year, getting practice, getting first team football because he's ready. And, and, and Bournemouth or someone like that or Hull would have snapped him up. Now, Fozu Menza could be that defensive midfielder. I, I rate him that highly. He's energetic. He's combative. He's strong. He's got good ball distribution. But there's no way he's ready to step into that position next summer, um, next season for United. So I think he's discounted, even though I think he can do it. Uh, Kese at Atalanta, 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 good player. 
He's from Ivory Coast, so there's the African Nations Cup thing, which frustrates people, but he is a good player. Um, he's got a good ball distribution. He's strong. He's young. He's actually close to Fozu Menza's age, which is probably what would frustrate people. It would frustrate me. Um, but he is getting a lot of first-team football. So you, on one hand, you'd say, I don't want Kessie. He's the same age as Fozu Menza, more or less. Um, why buy somebody when we've got somebody? But the big difference is Kessie's been playing consistent first-team football for Atalanta in Serie A against the good sides. Fozu Menza has consistently been uh, picking up the cones with Fellaini in training for United. He's not getting the opportunity. And there's no way, when you look at Mourinho's past, he's going to chuck a Manchester United youth player in as his centre defensive midfielder in a season he wants to win the league. It's not going to happen. So we are going to need to get somebody in that centre defensive midfield position. People mentioned Tony Kroos from Real Madrid. He's not a centre defensive midfielder. He can play there. He's more box to box. He's got a fantastic scoring record. Uh, I think Cruz would be a waste as a centre defensive midfielder. I don't think that will happen. Bakayoko, as we've said, he could happen. I just worry about his mobility a bit. He doesn't seem as fast as I would want somebody in that. He's quite tall as well. I think you need to be tenacious. Get in there, get the ball, pass it off. And uh, Kessie is more tenacious than Bakayoko. Um, there is somebody, I forget their name. In the, I, I don't know everything. I profess, don't profess to know everything. I'm going to go to the live concert. If just Tom Flanagan, give him an absolute, he's either a mind reader or it's just perfect timing. Um, Kater from RP Leipzig. Um, they are doing fantastic things in Germany at the moment. I don't know loads about him. I've not seen loads of him. Uh, I've seen about three games of him this season and um, he's doing fantastically well. Seydou Kater, I'm just looking up now. Um, he is, no, not Seydou Kater. What are we looking at? looking at I've ticked the, the wrong one um nabi cater uh, say is 35 um formerly barcelona um he is um five foot seven and a half so he fits into that sort of um height of tenacity um he's 22 so again he's got experience he's been playing at livsec he was at salzburg before both owned by red bull of course um and his country is, let's have a look, Guinea. So again, he would be an African nations sort of person, although I don't think they're very good. Um, I don't know loads about him. I only know a lot about him because you lot have been on about him. Um, I've seen him two or three times. He's very Kante-esque. Um, he'd be a good shout. Liverpool are all over him at the moment. Uh, they really want him. I'll tell you what, somebody said this last night um, on the show we did last night. I don't want to be in a situation with Manchester United if this cater is the real deal. He goes to Liverpool and next year they've got a Kante clone and because it makes a big difference in this league. If you've got a player like that doing all your hard work and then you've got players ahead of you, you know, like they have in Coutinho and Mane, they're suddenly a better team. I think Kante going to Chelsea last year, I think the big teams dropped the ball. I think United dropped the ball. I think Arsenal dropped the ball. Even City dropped the ball um, because Chelsea last year, no European football, 10th, New manager, not really an exciting pro uh, proposition. Nobody challenged them for Kante, and they bought a player that had just won Leicester the league. Um, so I, if that cater is the real deal, um, I, I would hope that we are in for him. Um, Richard Stain has made a contribution through the Super Chat. Of course, if you contribute through the Super Chat, I'll always spot it. We'll always read it out because you are contributing to the channel, which we appreciate. I know a lot of Twitchers do this now. But if you do contribute, make sure you put something up. Richard says, Dream Summer would be Donnarama, Varane, Coleman, Kimmich and Griezmann. Mm, yes, I like the look of that. But um, yeah, uh, that's a, that is a very good point from Tom Flanagan about uh, Keita. Um Nelson Semedu, Antonio Rudiger, says Edwin Castro, who we've spoken about. Uh, what about Verratti from PSG? I, 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 I might be wrong. He's a very good player. Um, went missing in the second leg in the new camp, didn't he? But so did the whole team. Um, I just think he will go back to Italy. That's what I've heard on the grapevine. Dybala at Juventus. We're going to talk about him in a moment, Gary S, because we'll move forward to the to the uh, to the forwards. Quite literally. Um, I've read the donation comment. I think. Yeah, I read it. You've, you've made me. Uh, Mitweedy is too old. Um, he's about 30 now. Uh, Tyron Williams. Um, Mitweedy would work. 
if we were going to give Fosu Menz the defend, uh, centre defensive midfield. Oh, I wouldn't mind the Tweedy if we were going to look at Fosu Menz in that position, which is exactly what we should be doing, really. So we're back. Good. It did this this afternoon on the preview. I really hope it doesn't do it on the watch along tomorrow. I'll have to keep an eye out on that. But um, live comments. We got that. It's thrown me as well. Um, we're back. We're back. We're back. Um, yes, so we are back. So, yeah, Matuidi would work if we were going to give Fozu Menza the job in the next two years. So you get Matuidi in, he learns off Matuidi. Because the problem Fozu Menza has got at the moment is we don't actually have a player like that in the squad that he can learn from, and he's a young kid. He needs... He, I've always said he can be the next Michael Essien sort of player. But he's got to learn off somebody. Mourinho can teach him, but he needs somebody to learn from. So Matuidi wouldn't be that bad. Um, Nagongolan, I always get his name long, wrong at Roma. Watch him tomorrow night if you don't know anything about him. I'm really looking forward to that game. And um, so, yeah, the midfield is a good one. Um, I like the look of that. Are we still live? Because we've lost 100 viewers um, and it should be working. Um, so let's uh, just refresh. Just refresh. Um, Forwards, let's talk about forwards. So you've got Dybala at Juventus, um, good good striker. You've got Icardi at Inter, uh, another good striker. Um, we've talked about Icardi before, he's a bit of a hot head, um, gets himself into trouble with the ultras and stuff like that. Um, but he's a fox in the box, very good striker in that sense, combative. Um, he's not particularly tall, I think he's about five foot nine, but he's, he's a decent striker. Um, I think the striker situation will only materialise if Zlatan goes. And it feeds nicely into that because we've covered players that we think will go. And we've spoken about De Gea. And we've spoken about Rooney and Carrick. And um, Zlatan is interesting because he's got... Manchester United have got the opportunity to keep him for another year. But much like Rooney, much like De Gea, Mourinho has been quite consistent that if a player wants to leave Manchester United, then he won't stand in their way. Now, we have got the option of a second year with Zlatan. And I, I suspect that we will want to take that option but if Zlatan says I don't want to stay then would you would you force him to stay no because the Premier you know he's a 35 stroke 36 year old striker why would you force him to stay if he doesn't want to stay we'd get rid of him um, now I don't want that to happen I, I, as much as you as anybody doesn't want to happen, it to happen because I think he's he's been fantastic this season I know he's missed chances but he has been fantastic um, live comments is frozen I'll knock them off but if he that if he goes, then we we will sign a striker. Um, my first choice is always Aubameyang. Um, he's got absolutely everything. He's a he's fast. He's tall. He's strong. He can score with both feet. And I think the what the one issue I have with the United's attack this season is we 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 can very rarely play the ball over the top. We can very Mkhitaryan and Mata can very very rarely play that defense splitting pass because Latan hasn't got the turn of pace. Um, he's got a lot of other things about him: leadership. Fight, strength, build-up ability, good in the air, got a good shot on him. But he hasn't got that pace over the top, which sometimes makes us very easy to defend against. And we've seen it before where teams will play just very you know, high lines at Old Trafford because they've got no fear of anyone getting in behind us. Um, so if you've got an Aubameyang in, then straight away you, you don't lose the height advantage that you get with Latan because I think he's about six foot three, but you suddenly get the quickest player, I think he's the quickest player in the world, who can get a ball in over the top. So... He would be my choice. Whether we could get him is another thing um, because he's always been quite open about wanting to go to Spain. He's not particularly young. I think he's 27 or 28, but so what? Latan's 35. We've got Robin Van Persie at about 30 or 31. Um, so I, I would take him. Um, if we can't get him, then you start. You do start looking at your Dybala's at Juventus, your Ricardi's at Inter. Um, I suppose Lukaku, who we started the show with, comes into the equation as does someone like Harry Kane. But the trouble with that Lukaku and Harry Kane is, look, whatever you, whether you agree with me or not, I personally don't think they are Premier League winning strikers that you build a team around. I don't. Having They would still score goals, though, because they've scored goals for Everton and, and Spurs. Um, and in a team like Manchester United, it's like Lingard. If you put Lingard in a Burnley side, he wouldn't be half the player he is. If you put Pogba or Herrera or matter in a Burnley side, there wouldn't be much difference. They'd still be very good players because they're very good players. Lingard plays better for Manchester United because he's surrounded by better players. He's not a top. He's not really a Manchester United player. He's a squad player. Um, 
he wouldn't go to Burnley and be their best player. He'd be just uh, the same as everybody else. You put Harry Kane in, in, in Manchester United side, I think, yeah, he scores goals. But I think when you need him to score goals and, and you are playing against Arsenal away or you're playing against City or you're playing in your Champions League, I think you go missing like he goes missing when he plays against Manchester United. And Lukaku goes missing when he plays against Manchester United. That's my concern with those two. And also my concern is they would cost more than Aubameyang. They would probably cost 70 million. Uh, I think I think Kane would probably cost about 70 million. I think Lukaku... 60. You get Aubameyang for 50. You probably get Icardi for 40. You probably get Dybala for 40. And and I think those three, Aubameyang, Icardi, Dybala, are better. Even Morata um, at Real Madrid, better. Um, so, there, I mean, there are other strikers. I'd love to see what people are saying about other striking options. Douglas Costa's available. Um, let's have a look. What anyone else? Uh, Jermaine Decrasse. Lukaku is the perfect striker for Mourinho. Big, strong, great hold up play and scores goals. Um, his build up play is rubbish. And, uh, but, you know. Yeah. Um, awesome guy. You really don't like Lingard. I don't dislike Lingard. He's a squad. Am, am, I, am I wrong? Do you think he's a first team player at Manchester United? I certainly don't think he's a squad player. Um, we've got another comment here from Nicholas Anderson contributing a fiver thanks he says do you think Lukaku sometimes struggles because of the players around him surely with Mkhitaryan Mata Martial he would be even better it's a good point it's a good point um, Dybala in a coma is better than Aubameyang says Jay uh, of course Alexis Sanchez we should mention him he will leave he will leave this summer um, he will leave uh, Chelsea, Arsenal this summer uh, I mentioned the name there Chelsea could he go to Chelsea? Um, of course he could. He wouldn't have to move away from London. Um, there's a, as much chance of him going to Chelsea as there is of him coming to Manchester United. Um, it's not an impossible deal to get hold of um, Alexis Sanchez. He's Premier League proven. I think he'd be fantastic at Manchester United. Would you have him as an out-and-out -out striker, though, as a replacement for Zlatan? I don't know because you'd lose a lot. You'd lose a lot of strength. He's not that tall, is he? I think he's about five foot seven. So I think he'd be more useful as a wide player. Maybe put Rashford up front. Is Rashford ready next season? Be interesting to see. I don't. Th I don't see Sanchez happening. It can happen if Sanchez wants to come to Manchester United. The deal will happen. If Manchester United is his dream move, the deal will happen because ultimately player power is what matters and Arsenal can pretend that they're going to hold him to his contract and this that and the other or that they're going to they'll only sell him to Juventus but the same thing happened with Van Persie they wanted to sell him to Juventus and he wanted to come to Manchester United and they knew they couldn't keep him and he comes to Manchester United there's not a lot you can do about it um, in relation to Dybala I was having a little bit of a look at him um, he is uh, obviously um it's not obviously. He's only just turned 23. He's Argentinian and he's about five foot ten. Um, decent player, very decent player. He's quick, he's creative and uh, agile. Um, and I mean, exactly what we sort of need. I, I don't know whether I'd say he's better than Aubameyang. Um, I haven't seen as much of him as Aubameyang. I've got to be honest, but I do like him. I do like him. Um, and he would be he would be my preference over a Lukaku or Kane. Um, Lacazette's better than Aubameyang says Darth Vader he really isn't uh, Lacazette is, is Jermaine Defoe that's what he is and th nothing against Jermaine Defoe but if you think Jermaine Defoe is good enough to play for Manchester United and win as a title I think that's what you'll find with Lacazette and I also think there's a big reason why the big teams haven't signed him in the last couple of years because there are concerns about whether he's good enough um, Monaco's Bernardo Silva should not be left out. I noticed you compared him to Mkhitaryan and Mata, but look at the way he plays. He's literally 70% David Silva and 30% Hazard, says Shay Cio. I like Bernardo Silva at Monaco. I think he will probably end up at Barcelona because he's that style of player. Um, I would welcome him at Manchester United. I would love us to sign him. My concern is... Sorry, it's getting late. Is what, what, who do you move out? We've already got Martial, who's the quickest and he's our best flair player. You've got Mkhitaryan, who has to play. You've got Mata, who's a decent player. One of those has got to go if you bring Silver in. So who are we going to go? Who are we going to lose? You're going to lose Mata, who is just... I think he's one of them players... Out of the three, I probably would let Mata go. 
But I don't want Mata to go because I just love Juan Mata. He gets what the club's about. He's just a fantastic individual. I love him being a Manchester United player. So I don't want Mata to go. I don't want Mikel Sarin to go. I don't want Martial to go. So I've got nothing against Bernardo Silva. It's just I think I'd rather keep the other three because I like them. <laughs> it's not a great reason, I know. Um, James Wilson's better than Dybala, says YouTube. Uh, okay. Uh, Silva is awesome. And Mata to go, says Darth Vader. Um Jermaine Defoe was more than good enough for United. One of the best natural finishers to come out of Britain, says Tyrone Williams. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Sorry, Tyrone. You're fantastic. But there's no way Jermaine Defoe was ever Manchester United class. No way. And if he was, he would have been signed by Arsenal or Manchester United or Chelsea. He's, his limit, his ceiling was Spurs. And I've said to this to people so many times. Just because somebody scores a lot of goals in the Premier League doesn't mean they're good enough to play for one of the top sides in the Premier League. Look back over history. There's been fantastic strikers, Premier League strikers. You're Chris Sutton's. You, you. No, why did I say Chris Sutton? And he won a Premier League. No, Chris Sutton's not what I mean. Kevin Phillips, Darren, Darren Bent. You know, people who've been top scorers in the Premier League who were never, ever anywhere near playing for the teams that were going to win the Premier League title in quality. And that's Defoe. He's a very, very good finisher, but he offers sod all else. You know, really, he's nothing else. He's got no height. He is, he is perfect as a mid-table sort of Premier League striker and he's a flat-track bully who will score goals if you give him half an inch against the lesser sides. Um, he's not somebody who ever should have played for Manchester United, in my opinion, and I, I would argue that with anybody. Um, would you rather have a 22-year-old Dybala or a 25-year-old Griezmann, says Cameron Wintour. I think uh, Dybala's a striker. Dybala's not coming to Manchester United. Dybala... Icardi, Kane, Lukaku, any other good striker in Europe or the world, they're not coming to Manchester United unless Latan goes. Griezmann is coming to Manchester United even if Latan stays because Griezmann is going to be the Galactico, whatever you want to call it, status signing for Manchester United this summer. Break the world record. He'll come to Manchester United. He's the Rooney replacement is Griezmann. That's what Griezmann is. Um, if people don't understand where Griezmann plays, he's not a forward. There is a player who plays a, as a forward ahead of him for France and, more importantly, for Atletico Madrid. He's a forward in the sense that he plays as a number 10 or he can play either side of, on the wings as well. He's not an out-and-out -out striker. He's not going to be taking Zlatan's place or whoever replaces Zlatan if Zlatan goes in the summer. He will come in and if in the current setup that we've got now, if we played that 5-3-2... He'd he'd be playing like the Mkhitaryan role that he did against Rostov last week, or if we play what we have, we normally play the four three three. He would probably play at the head of a midfield three with Pogba, and then I would go and get like I say a Kessie or a, a Keita or a, or a Matuidi or a Bakayoko just to do all the tough work, tough work. Because in closing, well not in closing, but Manchester United, if you got Kante from Chelsea. Put him into Manchester United's team and you played this team next season, we would walk the title. And this is it, right? So you, you keep De Gea, De Gea's in goal. You keep Valencia for another season at right back. You've got Bailly and a centre-back who is dominant in the air. So let's say, I don't know, Rudiger or Koulibaly or Varane or, or Amanlas. So they play next to Bailly. Your left-back, fingers crossed, is Luke Shaw. Um, because if it's not Luke Shaw, we need to sign a left-back. I uh, like Mendy, um, but... Darmian's not the solution, and David Blin's not the solution as much as I like him. So Luke Shaw at left back. You then got Kante, if we, we're not going to get Kante, but you can put Kante in the midfield, you put Pogba ahead of him, you put Griezmann ahead of him. On the right, you've got Mkhitaryan. On the left, you've got Martial, and up front, you've got Zlatan. And that team wins the title because simply, you can go, oh, you know, Pogba's not great defensively, it's too attacking. But if you put Kante in your midfield there, he basically does the job of two players anyway. And the 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 um, it will just give Pogba, Griezmann, Martial, Mkhitaryan so much time to focus on the attacking side of the game. So Manchester United's most important signing this summer, I feel, is if we do it, is to get a Kante replacement in, not a Kante type player in there to do all the hard work, who is fast, tenacious, and got massive stamina and they just get the ball and they feed the players ahead of them. At the moment, we don't have that, so Pogba has to support the role. If Carrick's there, Herrera has to support the role as well. If Fellaini's in there, they do it collectively. What we need is just an out-and-out -out defensive midfielder who shields the back four, lets the full-backs bomb on and wins the ball and then feeds the players in front of him. You stick that in United's team, we'd be fantastic. But having said that, 
You stick him in Man City's team, they'd be better. You stick it in Arsenal's team, they'd be better. You stick it in Liverpool's team, they'd be better. Spurs have got one Yama, but they but they would. Um, Marin Fellaini's contributed a fiver. Thanks for that. He says he'll look, look much sexier with the wig on. The wig is always ready for Fellaini to score. It'll be ready tomorrow night as well. Um, what about Cruz, says Ewan Stevenson. Uh, Tony Cruz... Where does Tony Cruz sit in? This is what I say to people who think we can get Tony Cruz. I mean, let's just speak about De Gea. If De Gea goes to Real Madrid, we must get something out of Real Madrid that isn't just cash. We must manoeuvre a, a deal with Real Madrid for one of their players to get in. It doesn't, I'm not saying we can, and swap deals very rarely happen these days, but money in the bank is nothing to Manchester United. We need to get something out of that deal that suits us. Um, Varane would be my choice because I think he's one of the best centre-backs in the world and he would be perfect against Bay with Bay and he's good in the air. Cruz could be part of the deal, but if we get Tony Cruz, you're going to fall into that trap again that we know doesn't work. You can have Griezmann ahead of the two midfielders and then you're going to have Cruz and Pogba. Well, that means Pogba's got to do defensive duties with Cruz because Cruz isn't a defensive midfielder. He's effective as a box-to-box -box as well. So you'd have Pogba and Cruz as box-to-box -box players. Pogba's defensive ability is, is an issue, and I, I think it will be. He needs to be more attacking. And Cruz is not a defensive midfielder, so it, I don't think it will work. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I just don't think it will work. I think the summer midfield signing for Manchester United needs to be a specialist defensive midfielder who will just let those ahead of him do their job in the attacking sense, and they will protect. Um, the thing with United's midfield three at the moment is, if Carrick doesn't play... You sometimes got Fellaini dropping in to defend as the DM. You got Herrera dropping in. You got Pogba dropping in. It, it, it's too fluid. I think United just need to sit their defensive midfielder like Chelsea do with Kante, like Spurs do with Wanyama, and then the attacking midfielders express themselves. That's how I would go with it. Um, Streetman's never going to happen. I'm not even going to talk about him again. Um, Cruz is box to box, Jamaica. Jamaica. I mean, I just don't know whether people watch football. He is box to box. Cruz can play as a defensive midfielder. He can also play as a number 10. But he's a box to box midfielder. He creates loads of goals and he scores a lot of goals. I think I think people think box to box is sort of like a Paul Scholes sort of midfielder. Who can, who you did use to defensive. You'll see Cruz on the edge of the penalty box for Real Madrid scoring goals. And you'll also see him on the edge of the box defending chances for Real Madrid. A defensive midfielder, like Carrick has been for Manchester United, very rarely goes past halfway between the centre circle and the penalty box because their position is to shield. They're a DM. Cruz goes beyond there. He's not a defensive midfielder. He can play there, but he'd be wasted there. Um, thanks to everybody who has liked the video. I've enjoyed doing it tonight. It's a, it's a bit of a weird time for us to do it, but I'm more than happy to try and do them a little bit later, especially as a show like this. Laporte is a good side, he's a good centre back. KJ got him, I agree with you. Um, please do drop a like on the video. I've really enjoyed it. It's nice to have the comments uh, on the left much bigger so people can read all everything, especially when it's a show like this, which has been very fluid but fast and frequent. And we've spoken a lot about a lot of different players and a lot of different positions. And I like the format of the show because. I can read your comments, we can look things up together, um, but people can also read your live comments as well while I'm talking, which is very important. And I think it's something that we can, if you like the format, we can certainly revisit it maybe in two or three weeks time and then two or three weeks after that, because it's transient, this transfer, transient and transfers, it will change, it's gonna change. You know, in two or three weeks time, somebody might be massively on our radar and some of these players might have dropped off. We might have somebody we know is gonna leave. I mean, we might do. Um, so I've really enjoyed it. Drop a like on the video if you have. Tomorrow night we'll be live at, I think it's an 8 o'clock kickoff. So team news will come out at about quarter to 7. So we'll be live at quarter to 7 with the team news right the way through till full time. Get involved with the United Stand for the watch along. It's always uh, good fun. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And you've, if you've wandered onto the United Stand, you can see the live comments up on the side of the screen. We are always live with our videos daily and there is always a live comments there. Um, the live comments opens about an hour before the video goes live so you can get to know people in there if you're a United fan or a fan of somebody else and start to make friends and join a community that's just been fantastic for the last two and a half years. The live comments is a great place. So make sure when you are watching, log yourself into YouTube, get yourself a username and get yourself up there and get commenting. Um, so do subscribe. As you can see underneath that, the news, 
Um, I've put the link in the video description. We've got a, a deal going with 21 bet at the moment. Um, if you click the link in the video description, sign up. It's eight to one that Manchester United will beat FC Rostov tomorrow and there'll be more than two and a half goals in the game. So even two one, that's three goals, two one to United, your bet comes in, that's eight to one, put a fiver on it, you've got 40 quid. Also, if you sign up, the big, big bonus is if you sign up, you'll go in our draw to win a signed framed Wayne Rooney shirt, which is a collector's item as well. So get yourself signed up, link in the video description, and we are giving the best odds that you can get for Manchester United games. So get on it if you fancy a bet. Um, thanks everybody for watching. I've really enjoyed it tonight. I don't feel like I've come up for air, um, but um, I've enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. And I think the Monaco game was fantastic and justice was done because they're a very, very exciting attacking side and uh, they were the better team in Manchester. They just, you know, defended like a chocolate fire guard. So um, they deserved it, very well done. And it was nice to look at a few players that, you know, they may not come to United, but they are certainly players that we should be considering. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, Jose will be considering him and more, but we'll be revisiting this in the future. Join us for the watch along tomorrow. Really looking forward to it. God forbid that we're going to get knocked out of Europe. I can't see it happening, but you never know with United at home at Old Trafford. I'm sure we'll have a few squeaky bum moments, but uh, join us tomorrow for the watch along. Thanks everybody for watching. Please do drop a like. We appreciate it on the video and keep getting involved with United Stand because we are nothing without all you lot. And as you can see, you share the screen with me anyway.